Hi everyone, Alex with Beam It Up here. Today I'm going to show you how to import details from AutoCAD into Revit. First we're going to prepare the CAD detail. Then we're going to talk a little bit about SA checks versus true type fonts. Then uh, we're going to import that detail from AutoCAD into Revit. And along the way I'm going to give you a couple of tips and tricks. I hope you enjoy it. See you in Revit. So if you're like me, you have a, a million AutoCAD details floating around that you know, you've been working on for many, many years, and you would like to have those in Revit, right? So let's say, for example, I wanna take this detail, right? And I wanna take it into uh, Revit. So what I would do is open up a new CAD file, right? And then paste my detail there. Maybe take my detail and let's say move it to zero, zero, right? Another thing you wanna check is that your, your detail is fully flat. So, you know, you may want to spin it around a little bit. The best way would be to, you know, put it like in left orientation and make sure that there's nothing there that is not in the same plane. And then you want to check your units, right? So you go to units and you make sure, in my case, I'm in the United States. So unfortunately we deal with imperial system. So, you know, my length is in architectural and inches. Uh, so. You always want to, in, in my case, I don't like, uh, like my details are actually paper space size. And, you know, many people have details that you have to reduce uh, 48 times or 96 times, depending on the scale factor that they chose to use. Uh, but for details, I don't see a reason for that. So uh, even though I'm in, 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 the, in the model tab and not in the layout tab, which was, you know, the old, fashion paper space and model space this would be model space i have like this square here maybe six inches by six inches so it goes into the sheet at the real size so i always work with one-to-one -one scale when it comes to details right because there's no need for a scaling factor and be dealing with lt scale and all that another thing that is good to note here is that if you are a heavy AutoCAD user in the past, you're very used to uh, very nice multi-text that if you move around, it would be very smart and it would adjust the leader to, you know, wherever you place it. You can say goodbye to that if you're just, if you want to make it quick. You can do that in Revit as well, but it's, it's gonna take you longer. So I'm gonna take this out. And let's say this is my detail, right? And that's what I want to import. So I already checked my units. Now I need to go into Revit and import it. So now I'm in Revit. I'm opening up a new project. I'm using the plumbing default uh, template. It doesn't really matter which one you use. So at the end of the day, you're just gonna bring in details. And you can even have these details in your template by default. Uh, but I don't see a need for that. There's just so many details that you can import just the ones you want into your project. Typically you have to relinquish you, your model to the architect and then who knows what happens with, with that, you know, with that model. So other people can end up with your hard work details. Like, like this detail, for example, that you see here, it's a detail that I created. It's not a big thing, obviously, but you know, it, it, it's some work. There's some work involved. I did it in AutoCAD MEP, then exported, and you know, it, it placed a little, a couple of texts there. So it, there, there's some work involved, and other people can just take your, your, your work for free. So that that would be very unfair. So anyway, the way you import details here in in Revit is you want to create a, a view. Right, so you want to create a drafting view. This is different from importing a, a floor plan from CAD, for example. In a floor plan from CAD, you would be notice that this is one eighth of an inch equals one foot. So it's a typical floor plan scale, for example. 
and then you would bring in your AutoCAD file, let's say your floor plan for level one, into plumbing level one, a real size. So, you know, a door would be, you know, three feet, things like that. In this case, what we want to do is create a drafting view. So you go to drafting view. Uh, again, some people use different scales. Uh, I like to use one-to-one -one for drafting views because I see no need for complicating things. So my scale value here is one. So I create this and now I have a blank uh, canvas to bring in my detail. Uh, another thing I want to check is the, the text, right? So if I go back to my detail, my text is under a text style in, in AutoCAD, right? Under text, you see my text style is standard, right? And that standard, if I go to, to text styles, ST is a shortcut. If I go under standard, I have Arial associated to it with a width factor of 0.75. The reason I chose uh, Arial is because, you know, originally text in AutoCAD used to be SA checks used to be something like this you know which are called SA checks fonts and SA checks fonts were those fonts that were made out of little lines here whereas true type fonts uh, are fonts that are fully scalable you know they, they're made out of smooth curves and true type fonts are the ones that you find in applica Microsoft applications like, like Word, for example. This is a true type font, it's Calibri. So, you know, Arial, it was the, the, the way to go, unfortunately, and I don't like it too much because it's a little thick, but you know, that's life. Uh, Revit pretty much standardized with Arial. So back to Revit, what I wanna do is make sure that my text in Revit is as close as possible to my text in, in AutoCAD so that the transition is a little bit more fluid. So for that, I'm, I'm just gonna place a, a text here, right? So you see how I have, if I click here, I have a quarter inch aerial, that's not what I want. So what I wanna make sure is that I'm, I'll change it to the one I want, which is three thirty seconds aerial. I make sure that my width factor is the one that I had in my previous detail area of 330 seconds. And then since I don't wanna have the other one, the one quarter here, what I do is I can go here to a manage and then purge unused. And then simply hit OK. And now I only have the text style that I want. On the other side in AutoCAD, I wanna make sure I save my detail with a logical name where I can find it. And now back in Revit, I'm gonna delete my text and I'm gonna to go to insert. And again, this is a little bit different from when you are linking a, a DWG file, like a floor plan. So if you were in level one plumbing, for example, you would be bringing in that as an XREF, as, as a link. But in this case, it's just a drafting view. So I want to bring on paper space, uh, size, just line work for my detail. So I'm going to go here to import CAD and then I navigate to where I find my detail. In this case, I'm not interested in preserving colors. So I'm going to just have black and white. Uh, but I'm going to keep all the layers, uh, the units. I'm going to keep them as auto detect and origin to origin is fine and this doesn't really matter i'm going to place in level one it doesn't matter because again this is a drafting view so i'm going to click ok and then i double click on the scrolling wheel and this is my detail right here just to make sure that this makes sense i'm going to go ahead and, and measure from here to here and then i see that this is nine inches yeah that's exactly what it was in, in autocad so if I go back to AutoCAD and then I measure my distance from this point to this point, you can see that it was nine inches. So we're doing perfect. Now this is a nice looking detail and all, but notice that if I click on it, this is some kind of block. So this is fine if you just want to print it like this, 
uh, but if you want to modify this you'll have no option other than clicking on it and do an explode so you can do either a partial explode or a full explode I would recommend a partial explode because that way you keep as many entities intact as possible but unfortunately if you if you see what happens you, you see how the line here doesn't end where I would like to and uh, let's, let's do it again so you see I did a partial explode and this became even worse so you have two options either you keep it like that or you take the time to do your partial explode and then you would have to adjust you know the the text accordingly and your line work and yeah, notice that those smart annotations that you had in AutoCAD are gone so you could definitely create a new text here and bring in this information into a new text and then you know uh, add a, a, a liter to this or two liters but you know this is a lot of work so uh, for now I'm just going to leave it like it was and then the location for this drafting view would be under coordination drafting views so I can simply rename this the, my old detail in AutoCAD Another thing you may want to do is in your in your typical text if you're adding an arrow you most likely won't like this uh, type of uh, leader in my case I would actually prefer the field 15 degree and then um, exactly the same of what I had before and if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.